Hi guys, welcome back to my movie channel. Today let's watch a film directed by Donato Cursi, the sensational masterpiece The Girl in the Fog, released in 2017. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. The disappearance of a girl leads to the disappearance of six other girls 30 years ago. These seven girls have the same appearance. They all have red hair and freckled faces and are young girls. So what's the purpose of the murderer? With the killer killing the red-haired girls, the old detective Vogel slowly finds the truth and reclaims justice for the ill-fated victims in his way. But the truth of the problem also surprises many people. In the foggy town, the psychiatrist Augusto is urgently called back to the consultation room. His special patient, Vogel Inspector, seemed to have lost his memory before the accident. Dr. Augusto asks Vogel about the bloodstain on his shirt. Vogel uses a mirror and tells the doctor that a few months ago, a girl named Anna Lou disappeared without a reason in a small town. Vogel comes to Anna Lou's house and asks her parents about her recent situation. He asks about how Anna has changed recently, who she meets if she uses mobile phones and social networks or not. The interrogation is completely useless. Before leaving, he tells Anna's parents about making public calls to attract the attention of the media. Because journalists are often good at finding clues in the police, and his mother could not do anything but pray to God. She wears Anna's bracelet on Vogel's wrist. Perhaps from now on, the fates of the girl and Vogel have been together. When he walks out of Anna's house, Vogel stands in place and claps his hands. The surrounding neighbors look towards him. Vogel returns to the police station. Here he presents the whole case to the police. Anna Lou went missing on December 23rd at 5 p.m. when she was on her way to the association's church. After she left the house, her phone was turned off seven minutes later, and so far it has not been turned on. The clap of Vogel's last time to verify that the kidnapper is familiar with the daily life of the neighbors. Because Anna's neighbors always pay attention to every unusual noise in the area around their houses, soon after, Anna Lou's parents, through the media, expressed their wish for their daughter to return to the family. After that, Vogel asked the film editing staff to wear protective clothing and seek clues along the river. High-class rescue teams and secret agents are sent in turn. Of course, these actions are only displayed to attract the kidnapper and deceive him. Anna's father goes to the police station to hand over his daughter's diary. When Vogel opens a diary, he sees a page with content that is hard to describe. He cooperates with Stella, a famous woman in the media. Stella flips several pages in Anna's diary and concludes that Anna is trying to hide something, which she wants to write to her parents. In the heart of a filial girl like Anna, there must be a lot of secrets. Vogel plans the media to pay more attention to Anna's disappearance. Everyone prays together for Anna in front of her home. He lets Stella handle news related to Anna in the media. He believes that someone will be suspected of appearing in the crowd of prayers for Anna. As expected, he sees a boy wearing a hoodie and taking everything with a camera. He even goes into the crowd and takes the gift that the crowd gave Anna. The female police officer sees the suspicious action of the young man, so she wants now to go to catch him, but is stopped by Vogel. He wants to wait to catch the bigger fish. After a few reasoning, Vogel makes a statement that Anna Lou was no longer alive. Very quickly after that, the police find information about the young man wearing a hoodie. He is Mattia. Just moved to town last year. He was caught while filming and using banned drugs. Not only that, but Mattia is also a customer of Augusto. After hanging up, Vogel goes to Mattia's house alone. The weak light of the flashlight creates a monstrous reflection. He turns on Mattia's computer. On the computer is a video recording of Anna skating. At this time, Mattia is behind Vogel and raises the camera. Vogel convinces Mattia that he, Vogel, can make him, Mattia, so famous and let Mattia provide him with some clues. Mattia turns on the computer and opens other videos with Anna's appearance. Vogel looks at a mud-covered white jeep that appears next to Anna. This is the first clue that Vogel found, but now he has not yet identified who is sitting in the jeep car. This is all Vogel told the psychiatrist Augusto. Augusto is a gentle old man who tells Vogel about salmon trout and their habitats. Mattia is an introverted student. The camera is his only friend. This is also his unique way of seeing the world. Professor Martini in his class is very good at guarding the students. His drama class is very popular with female students. On a cold winter's night, Martini returns home from a long hike. His gentle wife has prepared dinner. The rebellious daughter always argues with her parents. Martini also joins the search for Anna Lou. However, they search every nook and cranny of the wilderness but find nothing. That day, Martini and his wife use their daughter going out with her classmates to enjoy the rare romantic world between the two. On the way, they recall the old date. Then Martini tells the wife that he is going to get gas. He walks into the convenience store at the gas station and sees a video taken by Mattia playing on the TV. The video contains an image of his white Jeep. The convenience staff recognizes Martini first and knows that Martini is the owner of the white Jeep in the video. Martini and his wife go back to the house in a panic. He calls the police and admits the car in the video is his. His wife keeps questioning him about where he was on the day that Anna Lou went missing. Martini says that he went for a long walk in the forest and at night he came home. His words have just finished when the lights flicker continuously around his house. Reporters surround Professor Martini's house. 
The next morning, a lawyer calling himself Levi approaches him. Disaster suddenly strikes, and all members of the Martini family are overwhelmed. They are unknowingly considered a suspect. They don't know what to do next. That night, the police come to Professor Martini's house. They ask for his fingerprints and DNA samples, and Martini is very cooperative. Inspection results are available. Except for a few cat hairs on the car, they don't find any other clues related to Anna. Attorney Levi tells Martini about a case that happened many years ago. The bomber hit a small bomb inside a supermarket and blew up several customers. Vogel suspected Romeo and arrested him, but four years later, Romeo was released because the police did not have enough evidence to convict him. Romeo spent four years in prison waiting for the outcome of the trial. After being released from prison, he received a compensation of $1 million. It is not difficult to understand that Vogel's style of handling the case is to find out who will become the killer, and as for the truth, it doesn't matter. On the TV is playing a video of Stella interviewing the female student. This girl, because she wants to be famous, confirmed that Martini had sent her harassing messages. Because of this, his wife and Martini argue. That night, Stella asks to meet Martini at the cemetery. She offers to buy back the rights to interview Martini when Martini insists he is innocent. But in the end, what is the truth of the matter? That day, while Martini is repairing the fence, he uses a dagger to create a long wound in the palm of his hand. Why does he do that? Late at night, he arrives on time for his appointment with Vogel. Vogel says that cat hair is found in Martini's car, so it is concluded that Martini is the killer because the killer uses cute cats as bait to lure girls. During the conversation, Vogel pulls out many pictures. Martini is very calm. He says nothing, stands up, then turns to leave because Martini believes there is not enough evidence to convict him. Along the way, they find Anna Lou's backpack dropped by the embankment. However, there is no trace of her. The pink backpack is covered in mud. The book is filled with the girl's sadness. These two objects are the only things that witness the murder of the killer. Vogel goes to Martini's class. He leans close to Martini's ear and says, in Anna Lou's backpack, they found an important clue. A female reporter named Beatrice calls Vogel. She tells him about the disappearance of a girl named Katya 30 years ago. Vogel soon meets Beatrice. Beatrice opens the door to her room. Vogel is stunned by the clue she found. A murderer codenamed Fogman is a suspect in the serial murder of six teenage girls. The common characteristics of the victims are all red hair and freckles. Therefore, Beatrice believes that Anna Lou's death is the work of Fogman. The culprit is not Professor Martini. She then gives Vogel a diary. This is Anna Lou's real diary. Vogel opens the diary while he is in the car. The diary is filled with thoughts of a teenage girl. Not only that, but Vogel also finds a photo. In the photo is a cross standing proudly in the forest. Vogel quickly locates the cross. He follows the path. Under the cross, he digs up a videotape. He goes back to the office and plays that tape. He sees a man in white clothes holding a camera and taking a picture of himself in the mirror. The person behind him is Anna Lou. Vogel covers his mouth in disbelief. He drives to the motel. The big door is closed. With a flashlight in hand, he goes to the room in the video. Vogel takes the tape from his pocket and prepares to destroy it. The fact that he destroys it also proves that he is denying the ability to solve the case and admitting that he finds the wrong culprit. At this point, the reporter breaks into the room and catches Vogel. After this event, Professor Martini is returned, officially ending his nightmare. Crowds of reporters surround Martini's house. Lawyer Levi suggests that he take this opportunity to express his displeasure toward the media. Martini's wife also plans to tell the whole story on TV, and a publisher wants to publish a book about their experience. The police quickly holds a press conference, claiming to have found the killer who murdered six girls 30 years ago in Anna Lou. Vogel is in despair. He is turned away by his colleagues. A few days later, he is no longer hiding from the media. He meets Stella and agrees to be on TV. A few seconds before entering the set, he accidentally sees the circle of Martini's wrist that is similar to the circle on Anna Lou's wrist. This makes Vogel even more certain of his guess. It turns out that Martini is broke. He accidentally sees the case of the bomber who was wrongly sentenced to four years in prison, then was compensated with the amount of $1 million. Wanting this money, Martini planned to make himself the wrong convict. He learns about the Fogman case 30 years ago, then erases all his crimes. Because he knows that Mattia often films Anna Lou, he intentionally drives several times next to the girl so that Mattia could film the fake evidence. He observes Anna Lou's behavior and preferences, and she unknowingly resembles the victims in the Fogman case. On that foggy night, Anna is on her way to church. She meets Martini, who lies to her about finding a cat for his daughter. Kind Anna promises to help him find the cat. The next second, he drugs Anna Lou and imprisons her. An injection ends the young girl's life. It was December 23rd. Martini lied to his wife about his hiking. Vogel looks at Martini's arm, which is the round like Anna Lou's. Vogel understands that this is also Martini's trap, because Martini's purpose is to make others suspect him. Once Anna Lou's body is not found and his alibi is available, he remains innocent and receives compensation for being wrongly judged. After the interview, Vogel follows Martini all the way. He is determined to get justice for Anna Lou. 
Then Vogel is taken away by the police. He tells this to Augusto, a fisherman who only loves to catch salmon. Returning home, Augusto looks at his sleeping wife. Then he goes to the basement and pulls out a locked iron box. Inside there are six red hairs. The film's ending is quite surprising. Augusto is the fog man who killed six girls 30 years ago. He always likens girls to salmon trout. He talks to Vogel all evening. 30 years ago while committing a crime, he suffered a heart attack. Since then, he put it into his murderous career. Although the killer is not the same person, but with Vogel's careful and bold reasoning, he finally found the criminal who killed Anna Lou. The main movie tells a story but is nested within a story. The film leads us to many misunderstandings and makes it impossible for us to guess the plot. It also reveals that appearances cannot lead to precise inferences. Alright, my video ends here. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this. Don't forget to turn on your notifications. It really supports my channel. Goodbye.